kind of lay out for me what autonomous vehicles are. So, I mean, the, the general gist of it is uh, think like the Skyway. The Skyway is an automated train. Uh, autonomous vehicle is basically uh, a driverless vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, now, how we're you know implementing it here in town, we could possibly be the uh, first public transit system to put them into revenue service in mm-hmm. terms of mass transit. And so it's a little different than, than you know what's uh, been tested in San Francisco to a degree. Yeah, and I would say you know you bring up the Skyway as uh, as an autonomous vehicle, and I never thought about it that way, but it is autonomous. Like it doesn't have a conductor or anybody else running it. You just get in it and it runs. I guess the difference is that like it runs on a track, whereas like we're talking about shuttles that don't run on a track and will actually and please correct me if I'm wrong, but will actually be in traffic with the average Jacksonvillian. Yeah, I mean the Skyway is automated, so it's a little bit different. But yeah, so we're we're essentially talking about driverless vehicles um, that will not will op- possibly operate in mixed traffic which is uh, one of the big challenges. Um, and that's why you haven't really seen you know, this deployed at this point in time, because while the autonomous technology may be, let's say, safe in and of itself in a controlled environment, we're introducing something into a human controlled environment. And as you know, we are totally unpredictable. So right. a, a lot of the testing has to, to try to uh, formulate and predict what, um, humans will do. So that's going to be the big challenge here. And and that's probably one of the big concerns, I would say, that a lot of people are, are having in town at this point is how, how are we going to do that? And then uh, can we do that at a cost that makes sense for the taxpayer? Yeah. And so can you kind of lay out what JTA's plans are or how to use these? Because if I understand correctly, the shuttles, right, they're not like individual like cars. So there's shuttles that go to the Skyway or go to other JTA hubs? Like, how does that work? So, essentially, it, it is a, a guided system. You just won't see it. Um, like, there has to be uh, sensors um, uh, and things that are put in place to make sure that these vehicles <laughs> stay in, in their mm-hmm, lanes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but basically, the first phase of the what what's being called the Ultimate Urban Circulator is the Bay Street Innovation uh, Project, which is basically going to run from really La Villa down to the stadium along Bay Street. Uh, right now, I guess the plan is to operate that in mixed traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but eventually, um, after that project is complete, there's a second phase that looks at con- the conversion of the Skyway into an elevated version of this particular um, transit solution. And then the third phase or fourth phase would then be <clears throat> on ground extensions into adjacent neighborhoods downtown, such as uh, Springfield, Riverside, and uh, San Marco. Let me ask you. Uh, I guess the, the 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 big question that comes to mind when we talk about this is, um, I mean, autonomous vehicles are the new shiny thing, but uh, why not just have shuttles with drivers in them? Like, why 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 go to autonomous? Is it about is it cheaper? Um, is it safer? Like what? Like what's the drive behind that? Well, I think I think, and I and I can't speak for JTA on that. I, I do do believe is the drive there is a lot about innovation. Um, I mean, they clearly state that whenever uh, you hear about this uh, this project. Uh, but I also would say, from the community perspective, that there is a, a segment of the community that says, "Hey, we just need transit." <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it, it's it's great. If, if something like this can work, but really. But really, we just need to get from A to B. <laughs> like correctly, you just need right. to figure that right. out. Give me a bus stop. Right. Like, give me a bus stop, with some shelters, or give me a, a you know proven transit solution. That works, too. Yeah. So it's about I, balancing those two. Recently, I was, um, I was at a, a rally where uh, the UAW president, uh, this is in California, was, was talking about the, uh, the upcoming fight. Uh, to keep um, drivers behind the wheels of uh, semis, you know, uh, 18-wheelers, uh, and that, like, there's a, a push by big business to, uh, to to turn those into autonomous vehicles. And, you know, the crowd there uh, was very much, it was a, a pro-union crowd. It was very much against the idea of turning 
the 18 wheelers into um, autonomous vehicles. I, I thought a little bit more after I, I left that rally and just started thinking about like the, the plus benefits for having autonomous drivers. So we know that like when you're talking about um, 18 wheelers that, uh, you know, these guys and, 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 and women are expected to drive really long hours to like kind of hit their their marks and and especially like in the world that we live in today where everybody wants everything the the day they order it they want it to show up on their doorstep so like these guys are really being really pushed to the limits of uh what's uh possible for a human being behind the wheel and so in that aspect you think like yeah autonomous seems like it's going to be uh safer and quicker but then when you pull back a little bit, like the two big things that come to mind for me is that like it may be quicker, but also like what you were saying, human beings on the road are unpredictable. And so do you want a computer making decisions, split second decisions um, when it comes to people? Uh, and two, like the human cost of like what it's going to do to our economy to remove people from behind vehicles basically eliminating jobs so it's kind of a, a a a twofold thing that i'm asking you there like one is um you know when it comes to like safety concerns and the big pluses of having ai i.e autonomous vehicles uh versus like the human factor um do you think that's going to weigh in on in this conversation with jta in the city uh, yeah, to a degree. I mean, my brother's a truck driver, so you know this very well. And, uh, you know, when I was down in Central Florida, the energy down there, we were, you know, platooning in uh, that type of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it boils down to uh, what's proposed here in town, the reality of it is we're not to a point, and, w and it won't be happening anytime soon, where there's just this 100% autonomous uh, um, environment. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, here locally, we're going to have to address how we deal with the human factor. And there's no amount of money you could throw at any type of technology to, to, to change a driver who gets frustrated to something dropping 15 miles an hour in front of them. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, the other side of it is, is, is the job side, right? Like, I, you know, when we talk about these things, like I tend to think that, you know, with truck drivers, um, there's a lot of people that do truck driving and that creates a middle class. Uh, it's a middle class salary. Um, and we're watching how the middle class in America keeps getting squeezed, right? Like it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, so you, earlier you were talking about how JTA is always talking about innovation. And I think innovation is great, but I, I guess I have some questions about when innovation leaves people behind um, it feels like we're at the precipice right now. And like, do we make the decision that like our economy and continuing to have a strong middle class or creating, you know, a strong middle class uh, is important versus like innovation for innovation's sake? I, I, I don't know the answer to that, you know? Yeah, I, I think locally we don't control that. Uh, you know, things are going to change as the future goes on. I mean, this technology, I mean, AI, I mean, today what you, what you can do compared to what what was possible you know 10 15 years even five years ago is completely different so that is going to change and, and and it is a challenge especially in in the african-american community mm -hmm. um because like i use my brother for example as a truck driver um that was you know he didn't graduate high school uh, spent some time in prison and this was just something that gave him a solution to pay for his family you know yeah you know so um yeah, I mean, and I, if you even go back, I mean, my mom was, you know, here in the 60s. Uh, you know, she was a telephone operator. Right, <laughs> that's, right. That, that's disappeared. So part of this innovation thing, I think the solution is going to be we're going to have to uh, also find ways to invest in our communities and, and, and train people. Because, I mean, yes, we can have AI, we can have autonomous vehicles and all that, but somebody's got to operate it yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. You can join the conversation at 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. There's First, Co First Coast Connect at WJCT.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, all the places. We're going to go to the phone. We've got Tim in Neptune Beach. Tim, how are you this morning? Doing well. Thanks for taking my call. I 
just had a, a question about well, I travel down to Miami often, and they have an automated circulator down there called the Metro Mover, which has a lot of ridership. And I, I guess I'm trying to understand why we are looking to use or create new technology rather than just implementing what's already tried and true. And I'll listen to your response off the air. Tim, thanks so much for your call. Uh, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you go back to 2014, 2015, when this conversation about moderniz- modernization of the Skyway you know, popped up, there's been a lot of focus on the Skyway in and of itself, but sometimes we don't really dive into the history of how we got into uh, certain conditions. I mean, the Skyway, yeah, it's an automated people mover. It's one of three, uh, four, I guess, if you count Morgantown, West Virginia, but basically Jacksonville, Detroit, and Miami. I uh, have won uh, grants to experiment with this back in the back in the 1980s. Uh, that original plan, the Skyway, was always intended to be an urban circulator specifically for downtown. Um, it's never going to the beach. It's never going to Argyle. Yeah. It's never going to any of these places. But with that being said, another portion of that concept that was never built out is it was supposed to be fed riders from a regional mass transit system, whether we want to call heavy rail, light rail, streetcar, whatever, mm-hmm. BRT. Um, in Miami, they had Metro, Metro uh, Rail, which was much of a fail when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And in the last 20 years or so, Miami and South Florida gotten really aggressive around transit-oriented development around those stations. So what's happening with the Metro movement, while you see more ridership there, is you have land use that supports the, the transit system there. And then you have regional transit uh, uh, technologies that are working together to feed riders into it. Mm-hmm. So in the Skyway in particular, we don't have that yet. Uh, so one of these challenges, or kind of one of the things about the Skyway conversation is you can make this AV, you can make this a streetcar, you can make this BRT. And if we're not feeding it with riders from areas outside of downtown, it's probably still going to struggle. If we continue to incentivize businesses to leave downtown, we're, it's probably going to struggle. Sure. So, um, But in Jacksonville, we, we generally... Most people kind of see the Skyway and they think Chicago L. They think, you know, the New York subway, and it's not any of those things. It's, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, it's literally the people mover you take from the airport terminal to get to your airside terminal. That's, right. that's literally what it is. It's a horizontal elevator. Yeah. I, you know, as you're talking, like, I, I, I feel like a, uh, a light went off in my head because what you're basically saying, I, I don't know why I never thought about this. I, I, City planning is not something I spend a whole lot of time contemplating. But as you're as you're laying all this out, what what's really apparent to me is that um, city planning is the key. Like the way you talk about Miami and that they they feed um, this transit system, and so like if 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 they are incentivizing businesses and development in the places where people are going to get on, like it feeds it. It also helps, you know. Uh, with traffic and all sorts of things like it's 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 a thought process that's going on there and not not that Jacksonville does not have a thought process going on I'm just saying that like um, in order for the Skyway to actually work there has to be more thought process about how to feed it and and, and in what ways to feed it. yeah how, how everything works when I was in the Northeast Florida Regional Transportation Commission some of the biggest counties that push for mass transit were places like Putnam and we don't think about it here, but, you know, for them, their aging population, all the medical centers are here. Mm-hmm. So they, they were looking for ways to get, you know, their, their, their connection by rail to Jacksonville so their residents have access to our services. Yeah, and we're going to go to the phone. We've got Mark in St. Augustine. Mark, how are you this morning? Real good. You know, I'm really skeptical about this. I, I've been here forever. I was here when they were talking about building the Skyway Express. I thought it was a stupid idea back then, and I'm really skeptical, like I said now. But my question is, you know, you mentioned sensors. I mean, how much is this thing going to cost? It's, it, it, are you having to bury sensors in the middle of the road? Do you have to uh, you know, rip up streets for you know, a year and a half to do this, or are they going to be posted on, on, on towers or, or, or what? And the secondary question is, and I think you just kind of answered it, why are we going the first leg is going to down, be down in Bay Street? You know, that seems like that's very limited use. Uh, you know, it's not going to do anything for football games, not the limited amount of 
cars you're going to have available. I mean, why not take it to the mall or down Southside Boulevard where there's 10,000 apartments? Hey, Mark, thanks so much for calling in. And it's what do you think? All right. So let me, I'm going to go to about this a little bit backwards. Mm-hmm. So it's never going to the mall. Again, it's a urban circulator or, or more of a last mile solution. So this is the thing that gets you from a, a, if an actual transit station to your last destination. So it's never going to Southside Boulevard. That you, You're looking at a different type of transit solution to get you to a point like that, whether it's bus or rail or, or whatever. Um, number two, I think you mentioned something about the, the cost. So based historically, there was always a plan to extend the Skyway out to the stadium. Um, you have the Hyatt, which is basically our convention center, even though we debate right. whether we want to do with that. Uh, we have all this uh, uh, activity that or things that we want to see along the shipyards. Four seasons going up, getting ready to redo the stadium in some type of way. So there, there was always a historical push to have that line extended. Uh, now, with that being said, they, uh, JTA also won federal dollars, um, and they've secured funding um, to do this initial phase, which is Bay Street. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the, I guess the challenge in that is going to be, um, I, would, I would suggest that even if you wanted to do a streetcar or even if you wanted to do a bus, you need dedicated lanes or dedicated right away. Right. Um, that didn't. That conversation really didn't take place when, years ago. And, and now I think uh, I know JTA recently put out a, a, a video where they talked about the need to do that. Uh, but now you got a different challenge in that to do that on Bay Street specifically. Now you're talking about taking away the parallel, the, the parking of the businesses that are there, and that's counterproductive to mm-hmm. the downtown business environment. Uh, Cost wise. Uh, a few months ago, it was forty-four million or so for the Bay Street segment. Uh, I know recently that jumped up to sixty-five million. Um, uh, but you're not going to have, you know, dedicated lanes. You're literally going to have a, a bunch of sensors and cameras kind of stationed along the corridor. Right, right. That, that, and and there's also uh, there's also more things that um, you know they're playing you know planning to look at from a technology perspective than just moving, you know, autonomous vehicles down the street. Um, but it goes back to this capacity issue when you talk about the stadium. If you got 12 to 15 vehicles that, you know, may see you know, 10 to 15 people, you know, we all know if you're running at 15 to 25 miles an hour, uh, you're not moving any type of, you know, demand or crush that's coming out of a you know, stadium. But. Yeah, we got Joe on the line uh, from Fleming Island. Joe, how you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. I'm so used to saying good morning to Melissa, but uh, good morning to you guys, and congratulations on, on your advancement. Uh, listen, I used to live right over in the Arlington area, and I think that uh, Mayor Deegan's doing a great job by bringing autonomous transportation to Jacksonville. One of my comments on the air many times was that in order for Jacksonville to become a major city, they're going to have to have some sort of mass transportation rather than buses. My idea was, and if maybe one of her handlers were listening, was to create a transportation hub, uh, and that would be at the Regency Square Mall, which is just a dying ember, but it's also centrally located to the city. Maybe they would consider that as well. But I think it's a great idea, money well spent. That's if you want to become a major player in the country. Joe, thanks so much for calling in. Uh, what do you think about that, like setting up a transportation hub in, in Regency? Well, I mean, we already have a transportation hub. We just spent, you know, uh, you know $80 million or so to, to build the JRTC um, in in the La Villa. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a great building. It's next yeah. to uh, the old railroad station. So hopefully one day we, we can bring, you know, inner city rail back uh, as, as commuter rail comes online, those things. Yeah, so we have a hub. Mm-hmm. There, there are, uh, there's no reason that Regency can't one day be, you know, a regional hub. Um, you know, I think to the, the caller's point is that, like, in order for Jacksonville to really, you know, be a city of the future, we have to figure out this transportation thing. Um, but specifically what we're talking about with autonomous shuttles, that's that, that was that's never going to be the, the, the solution to it, at, at least this program that we're talking yeah, and, about. Yeah, I want to circle back to that because, again, that, that gets more into a confusion of what mass transit is. This is not light rail. 
This is not bus rapid transit. This is not the subway you see in New York or in D.C. This is the thing that gets you to that. Right. So we, we're not having that conversation yet about what that is to get you to a big city level. And, and technically, you could argue we're already a big city. Um, so as we go along this path of what this project becomes, that's where it becomes really important to start looking at costs. Uh, because if costs keep going up and elevating at the level they are, you get to a point to where you're paying the same for what could be one of those regional mass transit projects that impact much more than downtown and the neighbors adjacent to it. Uh, but you're not getting the same bang for your buck. Yeah. Because you just, you know, you're in a much smaller consolidated area and it's still, you still suffer with the fact that you need something to feed riders into this yep. area to make it work. So uh, in San Francisco, and, and these are, it's a very different uh, form of uh, transportation, but in San Francisco, there are autonomous uh, cars that, you know, basically function as an Uber. Right. Uh, I've, I've never taken them. I've seen them. The cars, the cars look weird. Uh, I remember like I uh, driving by one the first time and I was like, why would you trick a car out like that? <laughs> like it looks like it, it, it does not, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just don't find it, uh, visually appealing. Uh, I think the name of the company is Waymo or Wymo. something. Yeah. Wymo. Waymo. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, listener, you can go online. If you Google like Waymo, you can, uh, it, you'll pull up what the car looks like. It's, it's kind of strange. Um, but you know, in San Francisco, a lot of people hate these things. And so, uh, they, there's a movement uh, by uh, Safe Street Rebels that they go and do things like they put uh, cones on the hoods of cars, and that basically disables the car so they can't move. Um, I'm I'm just curious, like if we do something like uh, you know autonomous shuttles here, uh, is that something we should be worried about? I, I let me refocus that question. I think that what the rebels out there in San Francisco are worried about is safety. Um, they think that these autonomous cars are not safe. Um, I have no idea what the numbers are on it. Um, it seems to me like they look to be pretty safe. I think you're talking about a really different thing when you talk about um, Tesla's and their, you know, uh, uh, autonomous drive system. But these cars seem different. But there's a big concern about safety when you don't have a human being um, behind the the wheel. Uh, do you think that's a factor here in Jacksonville? It's a big factor. Yeah, it, it's a big factor. And I mean, we're going to be a, a test case for that when this Bay Street project is completed. I think they have to be complete by the end of 2025 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, you know, my, my advice to that from a you know, transportation professional perspective would be you need dedicated lanes or something to where they're in a controlled environment, self-controlled environment themselves. Mm -hmm. um, when you're mixed down in traffic, you're just going to get back into, yes, you're going to have people playing around. You might have a cat or something run across the street. I mean, who knows what happens. Right. Um, and, and that is a, the safety challenge. Um, the technology as a whole isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. And we don't know when it would be there. Uh, but, you know, we are in this, we're in, introducing it to a human-controlled environment. And we, we, we know we are predictable as people. Yeah. So that that is the big challenge. So the solution, I think, to that would be dedicated lanes or dedicated right away. Um, but again, that's a whole other conversation on, on if we can actually do that here in town. Yeah. Last question. As a longtime Jacksonvillian, do you like Jacksonvillian or, or Jackson? Well, you know, um, you know, Jackson is the historical word. Personally, I don't care. <laughs> you know, personally, so I'm gonna yeah, yeah. say you're on my side yeah. then. If you don't care, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just going to draft you. Um, so you're with me on Jack's Villian. You heard it here first on First Coast Connect. Ennis Davis is with Al Edson on Jack's Jackson Villian. Anyway, um, with with all the advances coming in the future, uh, and uh, and basically like what you see from the city. Uh, how are you feeling about the, the, the future, so to speak, of Jacksonville when it comes to like urban planning and, and, and all of those things, that, that, that big puzzle that you're constantly thinking about and putting the pieces together for? 
Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about Jacksonville's future. You know, we've always talked about having potential, but now you know there's a there's a spirit in the air. I mean, I think the economy is right. Um, you know, city hall is right. There's we have a big opportunity to take advantage of all the assets and the culture that we've always had. So um, I'm really excited about the future here. Excellent. Ennis Davis, urban planner and co-owner of the Jackson and Modern Cities. And just an all-around brainiac and good dude. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.